Good morning, friends. We are on lesson 11 for Wit and Wisdom. Our essential question is, what can we discover about animals' unique features? Our focus question is, how did Jane Goodall make discoveries about animals? And our content framing question today is, what is happening in me, Jane? So in this lesson, you're gonna get an introduction to the new routine of buttons and boxes, which they will use to help guide and determine the main topic and key details of our books. The text is briefly summarized to show how all the sections come together around one main topic, okay? So let's get started by looking at our book. Now this is the front cover of Me, Jane by Patrick McDonnell. <clears throat> Who is the name of the person in, that this book is about? Do you remember? It's Jane Goodall, good. We're gonna be learning about a word that we can use to describe Jane, okay? So I'm gonna open it up and I'm going to read page 10 to us. One day, curious Jane wondered where eggs came from. So she and Jubilee snuck into Grandma Nut's chicken coop. And there's the picture. Okay. So what word in there described Jane? It was curious, wasn't it? Okay, everybody say curious, curious. Now, what does curious mean? Hmm, we need to figure that out, don't we? Curious. Curious means to be excited about something or eager to learn new things. So what I want us to do is, let's say the word curious. Curious. Let's call out how many syllables curious is. Curious. How many syllables was curious? Three. Great job. So curious means excited or eager to learn something. Do you think Jane was excited to learn about Grandma McNutt's chicken coop about the chicken in there she sure was she was curious about other things in the world too she was curious about animals out in the world and wanted to know how to help them so what we're going to do is we are going to listen to our friend do our video and we will stop and pause at different points in the video to discuss. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Let me hide that so I can get to my Hold on, friends. Here we go. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Whitney Wisdom and Sync. My name is Tanisha Spears, and I'm excited to jump back into our work. But before we do, let's make sure you have all of your materials ready. For this lesson, you will need a copy of the text, Me Jane, if you have it. You'll need handout 11A. You'll need handout 11B, your Wit and Wisdom and Sync journal, and a pencil. Pause the video now if you need to gather your materials. Okay, you should go and get all those things. I already have 11A and 11B there for you, but you'll need your journal and your pencil. 
in previous work, we had an opportunity to make observations about what we notice and wonder about the me, Jane. And today we are going to talk more about Jane and how curious she was. But first, let's learn a little bit more about the word curious. Curious means to be excited or eager to learn. I want you to think something that you are curious about. What is something that you are curious about? Tell your learning partner. Well, I'm curious what the weather's going to be like today. What about you? Hmm. Are you as curious as I am to learn more about Jane? Great, let's get started. Today, as we explore the text, Be Jane, a little more, we're going to be thinking about this question. What is happening in this text? As you read, you're going to find clues about the main topic or what Be Jane is mostly about. I want you to think, what do we call the information that tells us about the main topic? I right, so one more time. What do we call the information that tells us about the main topic? Do you remember? What is that called? What's the information that tells us about the main topic? It's called key details. I'm sure you said it. Key details. Key details are the facts that give us more information about the main topic. Remember, figuring out the main topic and key details helps us as readers understand what is happening in the text. Okay, friends, we are going to do a routine called Boxes and Buttons. And this routine helps us organize our thoughts. Now, and just like you, I am at home, so I don't have buttons and a box available, but I'm going to show you what I am going to use. I'm going to use this jar, and this will represent my box, and these pennies, or crumpled up pieces of paper will represent my buttons, okay? Buttons, in this case, the coin or the pieces of paper, help readers to pay attention to the details so that we can understand what's happening in the text. These buttons or coin and taper are like the small bits of information that are in each detail, okay? Now, this box, or in this case, this jar, is the topic that's holding all of the different details together, okay? So, I would put my details in my box to hold all of it together, okay? Okay, now I want you to get yourself ready for your own button boxes. On handout 11A, you can use the images there to represent the buttons and boxes, or you can do like me and improvise and use a jar or a cup, if you have that, and a coin or a with a piece of paper. Whatever you choose to use for materials, make sure you get your learning partner's permission first. So pause the video to grab your materials for your buttons and boxes, or just use handout 11A. Okay, so I do not have 11A, but I went and I got my box and my buttons. I am using pom-poms that I had in a bag. So I've got my pom-poms being the buttons and this is my box for my pom-poms. So my buttons and boxes. Okay, now that we have our materials ready to help us organize our thoughts, we're going to use buttons and boxes to help us identify the details and the main topic in sections of the text, BJ. Okay, I'm going to read an excerpt from the book, BJ, and then we'll talk about the details of the main topic of this section of the text. 
Listen carefully. This excerpt is from page six. Jane learned all that she could about the animals and plants she studied in her backyard and read about in books. Hmm, what details did you hear? Here are some details that I heard. I heard details about how Jane studied animals and plants in her backyard. So I'm going to drop one of my buttons into my box. I also read about how Jane read about plants and animals. Drop another. All of these details describe ways that Jane studied and learned about animals. So I think the main topic or what these details are mostly about is that Jane did many things to learn about animals. In my topic, I'm closing my box. Do you see how I did that? Mm -hmm. I put the two details that I heard in my box or jar that represents my topic that held those details together. And then I closed it. Now I'm going to add it to my main topics chart. Take a look at the main topics chart on your screen. You will notice it has the page numbers and the main topic. So on page six is where I got these two details, but there are many other details in pages four through seven. But the main topic of those pages is that Jane did many things to learn about animals. Now, she's got this main topic chart right here. You can put that in your journal if you wish, okay? You can put it as topics chart, page four through seven, and then write the topic out. You're not gonna turn it into me, but it should be in your journal, okay? So that's the main topic for the first section of text that I read. Now let's read another section. And as I am reading, you should be listening for details. And if you have your buttons or handout 11A, you can touch a button on your handout each time you hear a detail, or you can place a button in your jar. If you don't have it, that's okay too. The important thing is that you are listening for details. Okay, this is point. These excerpts come from pages 10 through 15. Okay, so we listened to her read the first section earlier and we followed along with the buttons. So I'm gonna read 10 through 15 to you, okay? And I wanna see if you hear some details. So 10 through 15. One day, curious Jane wondered where eggs come from. So she and Jubilee snuck into Grandma Nut's chicken coop, hid behind some straw, and stayed very still and observed the miracle. So let's think about what details did you hear on those pages? Hmm. Well, I heard Jane wondered where eggs came from, right? So I'm going to put that detail in my box. And what else did she do? She hid and waited for Grandma McNutt to lay an egg, right? That's another detail. She actually saw a chicken lay in the egg, didn't she? It's another detail. Is there any other details you wanna add? No? Okay. So if we put all those details in this box, what would be the main topic of this section then? Because she wondered where eggs came from, she hid and waited, and she saw a chicken laying an egg. What do you think the main topic could be? Do you think maybe she was curious about chickens? Possibly. 
Well, let's see what she says. She and Jubilee snuck into Grandma Nuts' chicken, hid behind some straw, stayed very still, and observed the miracle. Remember, the miracle is when the chicken leave the egg. Now think, what are some details that you heard? Share with your learning partner. Did you hear about how Jane snuck into the chicken coop and watched the chicken? Mm-hmm. I bet you heard how Jane saw a chicken laying an egg too. Yep. What do these details tell us about Jane? Because she was curious to learn more about chickens. So the main topic of this section is Jane was curious. So let's add that to our main topics chart. Here's the main topic for that section of text that I just read. Jane was curious. And remember, curious means eager to learn new things. Okay, so now we've added another main topic to our chart. So make sure to add that to yours as well, okay? Sometimes the main topic is in the book itself. Like when the book describes Jane as being curious. Now it's your turn. I'm going to read some sentences, pages 24 through 35. As I am reading, Sorry. I want you to be listening for key details. Okay, listen for those key details. When I am done reading, you write some of those key details down to help you figure out the main topic of that section of text. Are you ready? Listen for the key details, okay? All right, so I'm going to read, <clears throat> excuse me. Those pages. 24 to 35, and I want us to think about some details. <clears throat> she dreamed of a life in Africa too, a life living with and helping all animals. At night, Jane would tuck Jubilee into bed, say her prayers, and fall asleep to awake one day to a dream come true. So let's think about the details that you heard on those pages. What were your details? Hmm, I've got my box and I've got my details. Uh, she dreamed of living in Africa and helping animals. That's a great one. What else did she do? She followed her dreams. Okay. So what would be the main topic here then? Jane's dream of working with animals in Africa came true. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Well, let's listen and see if we have the same as our friends. Page 24. Jane dreamed of a life in Africa, too. Page 26. A life living with and helping all animals. Page 28. At night, Jane would tuck Jubilee into bed, say her prayers, and fall asleep. Page 32. To awake one day, age 34, to her dream come true. All right, take a moment. What details did you hear or did you drop into your main topic chart? What are some of those details? In your journal, you can write or draw some key details you heard. You can also record the key details for your classroom teacher as well. Pause the video as you write. OK. 
Okay, so why don't you write a couple of your details down on that same page at the bottom if you wish, or even on another page. Now, I want you to think about what all those details are about. What do we learn about Jane from reading that section of text? Hmm. What are all those details about? What did we learn about Jane from reading that section of text? Take a minute. What did we learn? We learned that she wanted to work with animals in Africa, didn't she? That was her dream as a little girl all the way up to as an adult. You think about that. Okay, now in your journal, you will write the main topic of this section of text. So you're gonna think about what was this section mostly about. And again, you could also record the main topic for your classroom teacher. Pause the video as you write. Okay, your main topic is Jane's dream of working with animals in Africa came true. So make sure to add that to our chart. All right, let's think about what we heard and let's think about the main topic. What was Jane's dream? Think about that. What was it to she work with animals? Work. What was Jane's dream? She wanted to work with animals, didn't she? I'm sure you said this. We heard key details about how she dreamed of living with and helping animals. We also heard details about how she wanted to do that work in Africa. Now I want you to think, what happened to her dream? What happened to her dream? I'm sure you said it. Her dream came, came true. true. So the main topic for this section of text is Jane's dream came true. Okay, friends, if you need to, pause the video to take a moment to stretch or take a quick break. When you are done, unpause the video. Welcome back, friends. We have previously identified criteria for good topic statements, and today we will think about how to write a topic statement. But before we do, take a moment to share what you remember about writing topic statements with your learning partner. All right, I am sure you said these things, but let's review. We said topic statements state the main topic of the paragraph. Topic statements make the reader want to read, and topic statements include interesting words. Earlier, you were listening for key details, and you will be paying close attention to details in this next activity, too. We'll be reading a paragraph that includes key details, but it is missing a topic statement. Think for a second. What do you know about key details? What do we know about key details? They are facts about the topic, aren't we? Aren't they? Okay. Yes, key details support the topic statement. They can be facts and they are small pieces of information. All right, now you're gonna need to get handout 11B, topic statements. It looks like what you see on the screen. Okay, you should have that. So follow with her, please. All right, let's read the directions. Follow along as I read. Determine the topic statement that best matches the paragraph. Color the box light green. This paragraph is missing a topic you're going to determine the best topic statement by underlining key details and discussing what the paragraph is mostly about. Remember, if you already had an opportunity to represent key details with your buttons or your coins or your pieces of paper while we were looking through and exploring me, Jane, earlier. 
as I am reading aloud, you're going to underline the key details or point to the key details on the screen, but remember to point gently. Okay. Okay. So if you can underline the key details, that would be awesome. Okay. But be very gentle when doing so. And I also know it says color the box light green. You're not going to be able to color the box light green. You will just circle one of the topics at the top. But first, we're going to look at the key details in the story. Okay, so let's follow along. Okay, listen carefully. Jane and Jubilee went into her grandma's chicken coop. They hid behind some straw. They stayed very still. Jane and Jubilee saw the chicken lay the egg. Now that you've heard the key details, it's time to choose the best topic statement. Okay, so you heard the key details. So make sure you underline all those key details. What were they? Well, we know Jane and Jubilee went into Grandma's chicken coop. That is one detail. They hid behind some straw. That's another detail. They stayed very still. That's another detail. And your last detail is Jane and Jubilee saw the chicken lay an egg. So you should have had underlined all four sentences, okay? So now we need to figure out what is the best topic statement for those details. Here are the two <clears throat> options. Jane wanted to play hide and seek. Jane was curious about where eggs came from. Okay, now it's time for you to select the topic statement that you think best fits. So which sentence do you think fits that paragraph? Is it Jane wanted to play hide and seek? Is that what all those details are about? Or is it Jane was curious about where eggs come from? Hmm. Make sure you circle your answer. You can either color it in with the green crayon if you have it. <clears throat> you can circle your option or you can just point to it gently on the screen. I'll read the two choices again. Remember, you're thinking about which one best fits the paragraph. Jane wanted to play hide and seek. Jane was curious about where eggs came from. Pause the video to select the topic statement that you think best fits the paragraph. Okay, so did you choose one? What did you choose? See, I chose Jane was curious about where eggs came from. Is that what you chose? Good. I'm curious. Which topic statement did you select? Did you select the one about Jane being curious? I bet you noticed that the paragraph described how Jane was curious. And the yeah. details provided examples of the ways in which she was curious. Let's read one more paragraph. Now, this time, instead of choosing a topic statement, writing your own topic statement. Listen to the directions. Write a topic statement to the paragraph below in the space provided. I'll read it one more time. Write a topic statement to the paragraph below in the space provided. Okay, you do have this sheet also. It is connected to that one sheet, okay? So now we have to write a topic statement for this paragraph below in the space provided. Listen carefully. <clears throat> Jane watched birds making their nest. She watched spiders spinning their webs. She watched squirrels chase each other. Jane learned all that she could about animals. Hmm. Okay, what I'd like you to do is first think about what your topic statement could be. And then you are going to share it aloud with your partner before you write. And the last thing you'll do is you'll write it on the handout. 
and the lines providing. Now, if you don't have the handout, that's okay. Just write it in your journal. Pause the video now to share your topic statement with your learning partner. When you're done, go ahead and start writing and I'll see you when you get back. Okay. So let's think about a good topic statement for this paragraph. Jane watched birds making their nest. She watched spiders spinning their webs. She watched squirrels chase each other. And Jane learned all that she could about animals. What would be a great topic statement for that? Sound like she liked watching animals, didn't she? Does that talk about what's going on in that paragraph there? It sure does. So on your lines there for a topic statement, <coughs> you could write, Jane liked watching animals. So, Jane liked watching animals. Now, you could write that on your paper. Jane liked watching animals. That would be your topic statement. Now, if you write that on there, Jane liked watching animals. Jane watched birds making their nest. She watched spiders spinning their webs. She watched squirrels chase each other. Jane learned all that she could about animals. It works, doesn't it? It fits in great. All right, well, let's go on. Oh, first graders, how I wish I could see what you wrote about for your topic statement. I wonder, did you write about how Jane liked watching or observing animals? We did, 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 didn't we? Excellent work today, friends. Nice job identifying key details and main topics using the buttons and boxes routine. And nice job writing a topic statement. Next time we will continue reading with you, Jane. Until then, be kind and do something great because you are capable of greatness. Okay, friends. So that was a great lesson for buttons and boxes. So now what I would like to move into is our deep dive, our vocabulary part of our lesson. We are gonna do a shade of meaning for the word observe, observe. Now, what do we know about the word observe? We know that observe means to watch closely, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is let's play a little game right now. So almost like Simon says. So if I say Simon says observe the table, what's the table doing? It's not really doing anything, is it? But you're looking at it, correct? Okay. Simon says observe your partner. So if I'm looking at my partner, I'm kind of looking at him, staring at him, right? Okay. Simon says, observe your pencil. I'm looking at my pencil too. It's not doing anything, but it shows ways that I'm observing. <clears throat> so what are ways that we observe something? Well, let's make this list on the board, all right? We observe somebody by looking at them. So I'm gonna put look. We watch them. We discover 
because if we're looking or watching, we kind of discover what's going on. Or maybe you have to examine something, like doctors examine things. They look at things. Or maybe you study something. These are all words that mean the same as observe, all right? So <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're gonna look at your handout 11C, okay? And let me show you what it looks like. That way you know what to dig out. It is this one. Well, hold on here, my friends. All right, let me share it again here. All right, so if you notice this sheet right here, it says 11C, shades of meaning, and you've got a chart and you've got observe at the top and you've got different colors of gray. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six boxes, okay? So what we're going to do in these six boxes is we are going to list these words from the greatest meaning to the lowest meaning of observe, okay? So, Let's get started. I cannot put that sheet up for me to write on, but I'm gonna put it on the board. So I'm gonna go back to stop sharing so you can see what I'm putting on the board, okay? <clears throat> so these are the words that we're going to use. These are the words we're going to use. And I am going to make a list over here with observe at the top, and then we've got our six boxes here, okay? And I'm just gonna take these words here and put them over here where I think they need to go. So observe being the most thought after word there. So let's think about our next word that we could choose that would relate to observe. So what's another word for observe? Maybe examine, you think? Because you're looking at something, you're examining it to see what's going on. Okay. What would you do next? Maybe you discover something that's going on with it. Maybe discover. Okay. You discover it. What would you do next? What would be another word for observe? Maybe you study it, you look at it really carefully, you study it. Good, study it. What would be your next word that you would use? Watch or look? I'll probably say watch. I'm going to watch it. Okay. And then your last word, I would probably put look. And if you have an empty blank there, it's okay. Don't worry about it because we have the five words there. All right. So you have the words observe, examine, discover, study, watch and look. Now those are the shades of meaning for observe, all right? 
So once you've got that done, make sure that you turn that in also along with your topic sentence, okay? Make sure you turn in all the work for today's lesson, except for your journal where we wrote that main topic in your journal. All right, so that is the end of our lesson today, and I will see you again tomorrow.